Pivot tables are such a standard in Excel. If you are not already using pivot tables, well, I'm gonna help you get started with that. Also, if you are a pivot table pro, maybe there are some tips and tricks in here that you have not learned yet and that can help you make your pivoting process that much easier. I'm Allison Gonzalez, a Microsoft Certified Trainer here at Pragmatic Works, back with another Excel basic for you. So let's get over into Excel to get started. So pivot tables are used to summarize, analyze, explore, and present summary data. The pivot table design lifecycle really follows the same process each time. So it's obviously sourcing the data, figuring out what data you want to be using in your pivot table. That data is then stored in the pivot cache. This allows us to react really quickly and adjust as needed as we're going through and analyzing our data. So once your data is in the pivot cache, then we can start to lay out that pivot table design. We're really adding, changing calculations, aggregations, really get that set up really planned out so you can get the best summarization and like really analyzing the, that data. So we're talking more in our next session about kind of polishing the look and feel of our pivot tables. But in this one, I really just want to go through the data and show you, hey, if you've been wanting to make a pivot table for the terminology, how do you go about doing it? This here is an example of a good data set. We have a descriptive header row right here, row for the date, hour, minute, et cetera. There's also consistent data all the way down. I don't have any blanks in my data. Um, another thing you wanna look out for that would make this a bad data set. If for example, this had a bunch of subtotal or any total lines already in here, that would break our table. Also, if we had any blanks in any of here, any blank rows, any in the column headers, anything like that, if we were to try to make a pivot table and there were blanks in here, it would essentially start skipping sections because it would think it was not part of that pivot table. Another thing also to look out for would be multiple items in the same column. So anytime we'd have multiple elements all combined into one where that's not like just a combined carrot like soup salad that together is one but if i had for example classic caesar and the coffee in one item thing that's not going to give me an accurate count of both i would need to make sure that each of the items that i'm checking are in their are in their own separate row and of course the very last thing to look out for is pre-pivoted table essentially so this is good consistent data we have the same type of data all the way down through each column no gaps we don't have any duplicate or combined data in any of these things and we also have it in this distinct column structure what we'll see after we make this pivot table is that a lot of times people will look and see that end result and they'll want to preemptively create their tables to look like a pivot table, that end result. But when you do that, you're not going to be able to actually then pivot that data. So let's get into it. We're taking this nice, perfectly set up data set, and we're going to be taking this and putting it into a pivot table, play around, see what we can do with it. All right. So we have this data set here for this awesome Pragmatic Works restaurant. It's a nice little breakfast place, apparently. And let's see how much data we have. So you can push the end and down arrow keys. And I can see that I have 69,900 rows of data. So I have a lot of data here. It's very nicely set and laid out. So let's go ahead now and use this in a pivot table. To make a pivot table, we're gonna make sure we click anywhere in to our table. If we're over on our insert ribbon, look what our first button is here on the left, pivot tables. So with this selected, I can just go ahead and click into that pivot table. And it is showing me that 
in the exact range I have selected, I can verify that it did not take the name or the kind of title here, which is perfect. I just want to make sure that it is starting here at A4. And we know we saw it went down to 69,900 and that is J. So that is perfect. So when you get this pop up, it is asking you, okay, here's where your data is at. Where do you want your pivot table? Do you want your pivot table to go to a new worksheet? Do you want it to stay on this existing worksheet? Kind of it's going to be over here. I personally like to generally have mine go to a new worksheet. I'm going to hit OK. And there we go. We're going to see that this location, A3, so we're going to be starting our pivot table over here. And then we have our pivot table setup menu over here. Now we are able to kind of control this look and feel over here in our little gear icon right here. We can see we can change that look and feel depending how you want it to go. Maybe if you have really long column names, this would be a really good layout because you would be able to see all of them really easily. You have the one that we had starting with, you have the field section only, you have the area section only. This is a good one if you're kind of already finished picking everything out and you already have everything kind of in its places. You want to see those larger as well as the area section just like this. I personally like to work with mine like this, but I feel like the other most useful one would be this one. So pick whichever one you would like to try out if you're following along when you're doing your pivot table. Now, the field that I move my data into is going to control how this pivot table will look and react. So for this one, I am going to grab category, the category column, and I'm going to move it into my rows section right here. Now, all of the items that were in the category column, which we know is like 69, almost 70,000 rows, we can see it is shortened and there's really only a few actual items in there. I'm getting one instance of each nicely laid out in this column now. I'm going to now grab group and I'm going to put group into the column section. And now when I do this, I can see that I had two groups. I had alcohol and I had food plus a grand total. Let's move units into the value section and we're actually going to get some amounts popping up in this alcohol and food section. So we're going to be units dropping it into my value. Boom. Almost instantly it went through all 69,900 rows and got us the exact amounts. So we can see the exact amounts for each of those items. Something was alcohol, something was food, and that grand total with these items. So let's move things around over here and see how we can change the look and feel. So what happens if I pull a group into the rows? It's not necessarily a wrong layout. It's definitely not the most efficient way to view our data. Let's move a group above category, still keep it in that rows section. And that is so much better. Now everything is grouped by the light item, much more efficient way to look at our data. What else can we find out and build out this pivot table with? What if I pull the date in as well? I'm going to prick date into my columns now and look at that. It gives me months and I can see how everything is doing based off of that month. So for breakfast items in January versus in August, I can see how we are really easily doing. Like so easy to manipulate this data around. And the best thing you can do when you're getting used to building pivot tables is experiment. Do not be afraid to move things around, change things up, grab things, drag them around, see what layout does what with the data that you have so you can find some new insights with it. I'm going to keep bringing in data, keep seeing what else I can find out with this and get this organized in the best way with my data. 
So I'm going to bring in the item name next and I'm going to put it under category in my rows. So really it's giving me kind of like this impromptu hierarchy where it's having kind of my largest category and then kind of incrementally moving down into the exact item. Now, of course, with each of these, if I want to close it up to kind of save some space, I can do that and then expand it if I want to really dive in and understand that level of detail at that kind of very individual point each one or save space and just make it an easier to scan list. It is really up to you, but having that ability kind of lets you drill into your data. All right, I'm going to keep playing around this. I'm going to go ahead and it's a lot of deep level of detail. So I'm going to go ahead now and take item off. And you can easily remove any item by just unchecking it from that pivot table fields area. Next, let's take our dates and move the dates off. Next, I'm going to get rid of my dates and I am going to move my location into my columns. And then look at that. Now I can see each specific restaurant location for those sale items and their total as well. Now, something that is really important to understand with pivot tables is that your data is not live. It's held in a cache. That's how it's so quick to react. So let's say for this first one, let's go ahead and go back over to our raw data sheet. We're going to add in an amount and I'm going to make it really crazy so we can see it super easily. So I'm going to make this 2 million. Make sure that the red mod is zeros in there. Yep. So if we head back over here, notice nothing in here increased by 2 million. I added that over into a brunch breakfast food item over here. And look at our brunch breakfast food items. We have nothing. So it's not even adding it somewhere else. It's not adding it whatsoever. To be able to actually see this, we would need to refresh it. How do we refresh it? Super, super easy. You are able to click right into your data. You can right click, hit refresh right here. And that will be able to get that data updated super quick. Another way to do this is if I go to my data tab here in my data tab, I am able to refresh everything right from here. So this method refreshes a pivot table and all other data sources that are connected to this workbook. This is definitely my preferred method to do the refresh since it's really guaranteed to get everything. Leave a comment below if this is something that is totally new to you where you're excited to put this into practice or if you have other tips and tricks about this that you could put into play. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. That way you will be able to see all the videos as they come out. All the videos here on the Pragmatic Works channel are about all the topics on the Power Platform, not just Excel. So you learn about Power BI, Teams, Power Apps, and much more. Also, you can sign up to take hours and hours of Excel training over on our on-demand learning platform, and I will have that linked for you below. So happy learning, and I will see you in my next video.